What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a game called No Plan B. No Plan B is a CQB planning game that many of you are gonna see as very similar to Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, but it does have some key differences. The biggest one is the way that planning actually occurs. In No Plan B, it is a single plan specific style of planning. So it has a timeline across the bottom of the screen that allows you to manipulate it to see exactly where each of your assaulters are gonna be throughout the course of the operation. All of the planning takes place in rehearsal spaces that look like warehouses. So it's not the actual mission site. And essentially you're rehearsing with your assault force before you actually go live and execute the operation as planned. Once you move into the execution phase, you simply hit play and watch the plan unfold. This game is extremely unique and it just got several huge updates, which I hope make it even more exciting than the last time we played it. I should mention that it's developed by my buddy Sebastian. He's a good buddy. He's hung out on the channel before. And if you want to support him, support this game and grab a copy, it's available for purchase over on my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. I think the game is a really, really great way to enjoy CQB planning. I certainly have enjoyed my time with it so far and excited to share it with you guys today. And if you guys are interested in hanging out more with me, getting to know a little bit about what I have going on behind the scenes beyond just this YouTube channel, I invite you guys to check out my podcast. It's linked down in the description below. And we just had Karma Cut and Spartan 117 GW on the show to talk about our experience at American Milsim's Iron Horse, one of the largest airsoft Milsim events in the world. Talk a little bit about why it's fun, some of the gaps and some of the issues associated with airsoft on the whole, how apprehensive I was to play airsoft for the very first time. And this was my first experience in airsoft and some of the potential training value that we got out of the experience. There's also a couple of videos up on the channel from that experience. I'm curious on each of y'all's feedback from those events. So I know whether or not that's something I should continue doing in the future. So thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the show. Make sure you grab a copy of No Plan B over off the Nexus Game Store. Here we go. This game already has a ton of awesome ways to play. They've got a super comprehensive campaign where you can start with the fundamentals of just moving, work all the way through super advanced planning techniques. They've got standalone missions that you can work your way through. There's challenge missions that rotate every once in a while to give you different looks. And then really importantly, they've got a mission generator. One of the most important features in games like this is a mission generation tool that allows you to enjoy the game for a longer period of time because you get to continue playing these various mission types that are randomly generated and they've got different options in here. You can stop a siege, you can do uh, an intel retrieval grab, like an SSE kind of thing, bomb defusal, capture an HVT, or exfo your squad if they've been consolidated or trapped somewhere. There's a bunch of community missions where you can actually download them from the Steam Workshop. But today what I do want to do is jump right into one of the SWAT campaigns. The way this works is there's different chapters within each campaign. Today we're going to take a look at Lazy Beast. You can see that it's a low threat campaign and it has a skill point reward multiplier of one. So there's already a sense of quite a bit of progression and replayability, as you can imagine. Each one of these missions rewards perks and or skill points that allow you to increase the skills of your operators. You can choose how they improve over time. So you're actually leveling up the crew that you are assaulting with as you go, which is, I think, a, a pretty unique and uh, a pretty awesome way to enjoy the game. One of the things I love about this game is, well, one, the camera. It's extremely cinematic and you get this like nice freaking bokeh and depth of field so you can make cinematic replays with this super interesting art style. You can see the planning occurs kind of in this warehouse space and then when you actually go to execute, you do it on live terrain. And this map is kind of interesting just looking at it because I've got multiple breach points, but now one of the new features that's recently been added is you can actually put sniper overwatch teams uh, in security positions to give them shots into the structure to provide a little bit of additional security and you know potentially synchronize their actions with that of your team but just like any campaign we're going to customize this outfit this crew here before we begin actually playing through these levels and then these same characters will develop and gain skill points and uh and then kind of persist throughout the rest of the campaign so pretty cool and we're going to start off by just customizing one character you guys can kind of see what that's like and after that i'll kind of zoom through the rest of this we'll start off with this dude we'll customize him i'm just gonna call this dude pairs Uniform, let's go. I'm gonna keep these dudes blacked out, I think. We'll make him the senior dude. He can be a lieutenant. We'll put all these dudes in. Oh, did you can go full masks? That's kind of dope. I wish they had like traditional eye pro. We'll go with this guy. 
it's pretty cool. You can customize even their like kit here. It's pretty awesome. I'm looking for like a GP pouch or something similar. Yeah, that works. Kind of like a GRG pouch. We'll stay blacked out. The patch, obviously. We'll rock the CPG. How sick is that? <laughs> we'll go mags up front. Just SWAT dudes. We just need singles. Actually, we'll go radio on the left side. The right side, we'll go with the third mag. Looks like a pistol mag there. On the right side. Pistol holster. And then up front, we'll go with a dangler if there is one. That kind of works. Yeah, there you go. That is as close to my actual kit setup as I think we can produce. I love it. Um, all right, so there we are, folks. Actually, I'm going to change his mask. All right, so we've kitted out my character. I've got three mags up front. You can't put three, like, uh, mag pouches on the front of the plate carrier just because of the way the model is designed. But I went three of the regular mag pouches, a little radio, pistol mags on the left side, a little dangler, and then a pistol holster on the right side. So that is what we are going to look like. I'm going to just go through and customize the rest of the team real quick so we've got it done. All right, we've only got three available skill points to level up our guys. This is across the entire force. And you can see there's a ton of things that we could level up. Um, so, yeah, there, there's just an insane amount of customization that can be done. I go ahead and I burn two skill points to give pairs a uh, AR specialist perk. And we'll deploy right there. So, number one dude, ready to go. Couple bangs, looking lit. That's so neat. All right, next I think I want to put a sniper in position. So we've got one. Um, so let's do it. I'm going to make this dude fodder. Fodder can be my sniper. Useless fodder, good buddy of mine, content creator, definitely worth checking out. His patch is in the game as observed right here. So let's go ahead and customize fodder. We're going to keep him slick, right? Because he's snot. He's not a breacher. We've got 1,600. I need 2,500. So I need 900 credits. I don't want to give up my M4s. I'm going to sell a pistol. It's worth selling bangs. They're cheap. And we will be able to get more quickly after we consume them. So it's worth it to get my boy fodder along good. You owe me fod. My dude owes me. Look at that. Haha, <laughs> that's so sick. So fodder is now in position. Ready to take aim. That's pretty sick. I think next let's uh let's equip J Red. I didn't recognize many of those other patches. I, I definitely know these guys though. So J Red can be my two man all day long. Justin Red, 87, also worth checking out. Good dude, Marine, solid content creator, worth your time. He's definitely going to run an M4 as well. We will deploy him as such. All right, so what we got so far is dudes kind of pan out to get a better angle on the door. Door comes open, and right when that door comes open, I want a freaking bang to come in right behind it. So I'm going to throw that with tooth here. The door is going to open. Bang is going to go off. After that bang, we'll pie. Right here. So right at that moment, our point of aim moves to the center of the room. So shot, 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 shot. Bang goes out. Bang detonates. That triggers the shift to the center of the room. Homie moves. So here's what we've got for this like initial breach so far. Team steps out. They've got good security on the door. Breacher gets the door open. Bang man gets the bang in. Bang goes off, triggers the center check. Center check into a dynamic entry. One man goes right, two man goes left, three man goes right, four man goes left. We got to fix their point of aims on the other side of the door now.
All right, this is an open threshold that we pied from external, and we've also seen through it, and we've got good eyes from snot external, so there's no need for us, really, to prep this room with a bang unless we've taken contact. Of course, we can't make that decision in this game because it's a single plan style game, but here I'm going to be deliberate with the use of these handhelds that are a limited resource. I'm going to be a little bit slower with it. We've already pied a lot of it from external based off of this kind of movement here. We've even cleared kind of those hard corners. I'm going to presume most of this room is clear. I'm going to treat this space over here as kind of like my next challenge. Um, the person with the most situational awareness here is going to be Bomber, so he's going to end up being our number one man on this one. We will center check on the way in. Center check. Immediately transition to the deep corner. So there's the center check right there. Give him a step or two. Muzzle breaks the plane. Transition to the hard corner. Transition to a pie. He's going to be moving laterally and focus deep. So this corner kind of ends up being his primary concern really quick. And he's also got an open breach here. So that's what we're doing with our number one man. We're going to run the rabbit on this one. There we go. All right, that should give our two to one engagement. Now the concern is this uh, closed door, which could be open at this point. We're going to solve that by doing a simo breach with these guys and also pulling security on that door. Okay. And the last thing we have left to do is go long right here. We can do that with three dudes. I'm going to save my bangs again. Roger that. All right, now my second team is actually going to make entry at this moment. Um, and we're going to accomplish that right as the breach occurs in the adjacent room. I'm on it. Holy moly, folks. So simple structure extremely detailed planning this is what it ended up looking like and i'll kind of explain it all the way through here so we already talked about why we arrayed ourselves in the way that we did in our general plan going in bottom line is we've got sniper overwatch external ready to take shots through this window we've got our primary assault team here doing most of the clearance then we'll synchronize that with an additional breach later during the clearance from our alternate assault team these guys four-man stack it's going to kick off with us kind of just pying a little bit throwing the door open getting a bang in that bang triggers a center check for me. I make entry, clear the hard corner, two, three, four man follow, giant corner fed room. We treat it like a corner fed initially, but then break out kind of into a strong wall, complete deliberate clearance of this room. There is dead space behind a pillar in the center of the room based off this mock-up. Next threat is open breach, deep right corner, two man goes wide. And they pie it from deep external since it is an open breach, but Snot's got good overwatch through that window, so we should have good SA. Short pause just outside the next breach. We're going to flood that open breach, having cleared it from external. That'll trigger simultaneous breach from the alternate team. They're going to get a bang in. Our primary assault team's going to run the rabbit on this first clearance as our alternate team makes dynamic entry after that bang. One takes two, two takes one, three man holds the door. That'll clear that third room. Last challenge is going to be running the rabbit on this final chunk of dead space. We're not going to prep it. We have been compromised. There's some risk of fracture side here based off of that sub gun, that white dude right there in a weird position to potentially have to shoot past that guy in the yellow. I've mitigated that by putting their sectors of fire deep in the corners. So we'll see how this thing plays out. This is what it looks like in rehearsal mode. It's extremely satisfying once you get this thing like actually dialed in and trace it out. You think through it logically. What a good, uh, just an excellent way to do tactical decision gaming. Throwing grenade. In position. All right. Let's see how we do. Execute. Confirm. I'm not nervous. You're nervous. All right. Here we go. Oh, one shot from a sniper. Two shots from a sniper. 
I think we did take a little bit of damage there. We've got two enemy killed in action by Snot. Two in the main breach. Nice work, Fod. There we go. Clean run, first try. That was freaking sick. I'm going to keyframe this out real quick. One of the cool features in this game is the cinematic camera. It allows you to save and record pretty dope little cinematic replays. I'm going to make exactly that right now, and, uh, and I'll be able to share it with you guys. So Bomber took an injury. He took one round, so minus 18% HP. We'll have to level him up. Everyone else got a skill point. That's kind of freaking badass. We'll go back to the mission replay here and play it back. So there you have it, folks. One single plan. Extremely detailed planning. Absolutely incredible control of each individual. Amazing customization. Tons of replay value. Tons of things to unlock and tweak and develop and uh, and grow each individual character. I'm excited about playing some more No Plan B. I'm extremely eager to hear what you guys have to think about it. Does this game look fun to you? Does it look interesting to you? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Controlled Pairs. This is No Plan B. I'll see you guys in the next one.